What's up guys? We're gonna do another quick day of eating, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Pretty similar to what you guys have seen me doing for the past few months, but as with every video, there, there's a few things that are slightly different. So for breakfast here, we have our organic pancakes, half of the organic pancake mix and half oats. That's on frankiestrangefoods.com as well as the organic maple syrup and organic honey crisp apples. I mean, actually everything here is on the foods website because we got some water kefir too. We're sold out of water kefir grains, but we have those. It's a little silly. I basically sell everything I'm eating here, which wasn't the case years ago, but eventually I developed my businesses to be what I personally do. So we're gonna have the pancakes with the water kefir probiotic regimen. We're gonna have some supplements as well, and then some masticum to finish off the meal. Uh, so all the meals are balanced of protein, carbs, small amount of fat with some soluble fiber. And the protein in these is the collagen bone broth from Frankie's syringe meat. So that's our protein source. It's mixed with the pancakes. We did a recipe on those pancakes a few weeks ago if you guys wanna make them yourself. It's a really easy and approachable way to get protein into your breakfast. You know, I mean, we do have like Iberico sausages and you could always have like a high quality pork. That's kind of what I like, but this is easy, simple. Just put the collagen in the pancakes, cook them. Uh, it's good. Now I was skipping the water kefir for a little while because I didn't feel good when I had it. That was probably candida die off. So I took too long of a break from the water kefir and then reintroducing it was not easy, but uh, we're kind of back on it now. Uh, so what I like doing is I'll have you know, half of a pancake just to get a little bit of food in my stomach. Honestly. So then we'll have some water kefir grains swallowed down with some water kefir. We're gonna do two tablespoons of kefir grains. So both water kefir and water kefir grains are very effective probiotics. The reason you would want to have grains with the uh, the liquid too is because you know you can only drink so much water kefir with the meal, and the grains are a more concentrated and varied source of pro is that varied source of probiotics. And you'll see the grains in your bowel movement if you eat too much of them. Uh, the water kefir bacteria is probably making it through your whole digestive system as well, but I think the the water kefir grains are probably more effective in, in the lower bowel, in, in the second intestine part of your digestive system. So after I have, you know, as I said, half the pancake, I'll do some water kefir grains and I'll start drinking the water kefir. And then I like having the supplements about halfway through my meal so they don't get absorbed too quickly and like my liver just isn't bombarded with, with minerals, at least when you have it like in the middle of the meal, it's almost as if you're absorbing minerals that are in the food. It's already like 12.15 because I burned the first batch of pancakes and I had to make another one. Uh, it, it, it's a little hard to get the recipe right if you're not measuring. I don't, I don't measure it every time and the protein and sugar content of the pancakes, it can be a little finicky to say the least, but that's bad because it's the only like nice day in Pennsylvania in the past month. So I really wanna go out and get like two hours of sun but me filming this day of eating is delaying that. I have the tanning bed now, so it's not that big of a deal, but I do want to lay outside for like an hour or two and then head over to work, which is nice because it's Thursday and I don't, like Thursday, we're not shipping. We usually ship Monday through Wednesday, so now that's Thursday and we don't, I did, I, I worked like a dog the past two days. I was down there at 6 a.m. one day, I was there till 8 p.m. another day, just, So I don't have too much to do today. I mean, there's always things to do, but nothing's a rush. So I can lay out in the sun for a little bit in the middle of the day. And I don't really mind because instead of doing like more YouTube content, 
I've just been physically working more and focusing more on business ideas. Maybe because I'm like, I don't really, I'm a little upset with how the eyes turned out and I don't like doing content anymore, but I have to do some. So, so I shifted time from like the social media stuff to just working a little more down there. So we got about half of our meal done. Now we're gonna do the supplement routine. So a few times a week for breakfast, I take a multi-mineral instead of the regular, the regular routine. The regular routine, which you guys will see for the second meals. Uh, I won't explain it now, you'll see it from lunch. Uh, but this has everything. So we're getting iodine, molybdenum, selenium, manganese, boron, zinc, magnesium. So we'll take two of the multi-mineral. We'll take two calcium, which is new. You guys saw that last week. And we'll take one vitamin K2, which is also new. Uh, the only thing I'm not gonna take is the D3 because we're gonna get a lot of sun later. So we don't need to, we don't need to take the D3. Vitamin D is usually something you only have to take for like a few weeks to replenish the stores and then you're good to go. Oh well, we also gotta take some B1. So we have multi-mineral, two B1 capsules, two calcium capsules, and uh, vitamin K2. Now the reason the calcium is not in the mineral is because depending on the person's past dietary history and health history, they may or may not have excess calcium stored in the body. Someone who's older, who's eaten dairy their whole life, might have enough calcium in their body for five or 10 years. It can be that excessive. Someone like me who was carnivore for a while and depleted my calcium with magnesium, I'm actually a very, very rare exception of someone with depleted calcium stores that needs to now take some calcium. So it's very rare that you have to supplement calcium. It can happen, which is why I decided to come out with the supplement on organ supplements. It's something you'll figure out if you start taking a lot of magnesium and you're taking a lot of K2 and you're having health issues, uh, it could be like bladder related, like you're urinating too much, you could get insomnia, uh, calcium deficiency related stuff. You, you might find out, but most people don't get it. Most people don't get those symptoms. They just feel better when they take magnesium. And the K2 we have is a low dose. So each one of these capsules is only 100 micrograms of MK4 and 10 micrograms of MK7, which is the safe and correct dose of what you would get in an actual meal. So the combination of the K2 and the water key for probiotics is, is gonna give my body enough vitamin K because bacteria ferments and produces vitamin K. And the reason we're taking these minerals, if you guys haven't been up to date, is to correct the copper toxicity. So we basically take everything besides copper and then the copper level's lower. It sounds kind of silly, but it can actually be difficult to avoid copper. So we're avoiding copper in the diet. We're taking every mineral besides copper and uh, we did a blood work update a few weeks ago. It's been working, it's been working very effectively. So I think another few months who knows, we might be close to done with the copper toxicity issue. So I'm just gonna eat the rest of my meal. I'll have a few pieces of honey crisp apple. After the whole meal's done, I'm gonna have some mastic gum powder and some activated charcoal. And what that does is it gets the food away from the liver. So right after the stomach, small intestine is where the liver enters and exits kind of. That's where most of the liver function is happening in the very beginning stages of digestion. So by having mastic gum and charcoal, it's pushing that food away from the liver. I don't want like dysbiosis, candida there. I don't want uh, all the food staying there and my liver absorbing the bad stuff. So by pushing the food through the rest of the digestive system, you're keeping the gut motility up and you're able to de detox the liver a lot more efficiently. Mastic gum, out of everything we're taking here, I would say the mastic gum is the most important. Uh, the water kefir is the second most important with the kefir grains. And then the supplements are probably third on that list. Because when you're toxic and you have excess nutrients or minerals, candida tends to overgrow. And the only way to keep that candida in check is to take probiotics or use a lot of mastic gum. But if you use a lot of mastic gum, you're just going to have diarrhea all day. So probiotics are the realistic way to handle that. But 
I'm gonna finish my breakfast, get some sun, and maybe we'll have a little snack with you guys before we go to work. I'll show you guys the master film real quick. So we finished everything. We had our supplements, we had plenty of food. We had a lot of water key for a lot of water key for grains. I actually had another tablespoon of grains before I had a few pieces of the honey crisp apple. So now we're gonna take one charcoal capsule and about a third a teaspoon of masticum. Now for me, half a teaspoon means it might disrupt my gut motility. A quarter teaspoon is not enough. Um, and then if I take half a teaspoon for multiple meals, then I'll just have like full on, like just stomach loosey goosey, so. Now, this mastic, as with all the supplements, is on organsupplements.com. So, we sell masticum capsules. You can just take the capsule, which I like for traveling and on the go, but if I'm home, I prefer to just buy the actual mastic tears, uh, grind them up in the spice grinder, and just have a bowl here, because the dispersion and the effectiveness is, is much better like this. But obviously if you're traveling, that's kind, of the, that's kind of the way to go. So now, at the end of the meal, I'm gonna take my glandulars. If I remember right when I wake up, I'll take the glandulars because usually I don't eat for like half an hour or an hour. Uh, so I'll usually do these in the morning on an empty stomach. But if I forget, like today, I'll take them after the meal. So we have the male virility, and I have an unlabeled bigger bottle of brain powder. Uh, this is not the brain powder, this is the third eye, which is technically glandular brain powder, but a more expensive version. So we'll take one scoop of the third eye, and two scoops of male virility. Honestly, you should probably stop taking this because I jerk off and waste too much time jerking off all day, but it does give me some energy. This, uh, this third eye glandular, guys, is very underrated because the weight of the pineal gland compared to the rest of the brain is like insane. I think it's like the gland only weighs a few grams. So they harvested like each bottle of third eye powder is probably like something crazy, like 50 cows worth of pineal gland. So. Just keep that in mind, you're getting a very special and crazy product. The way to know if the male virility is working is you should have more energy levels and you should see an increased sex drive. That applies to both men and women. And then the way the third eye should be working is you should be like more creative. You should be able to focus a little bit better. And that's the main thing with the third eye. Uh, you should be able to like think thoughts a little clearer. Whereas with the regular brain powder, you might just have a little more focus. So I'll see you guys the next meal. I was actually supposed to take my car to the mechanic today, but I didn't fall asleep. So I said, screw it, I'll take it tomorrow instead. And I just tried to get like an hour to sleep. Uh, and now we're tanning outside. So it's pretty hot today. It's like 80 degrees. So no wind laying in the sun, no clouds, 80 degrees. I'm sweating my guts out. So I can only be out here for like, like 35, 40 minutes. And then I'll start like, my heart rate goes up. I start not feeling so good. So I'll go inside to cool off a little bit. Uh, but I just want to show you guys my tanning setup. So we got four towels laid out here on just like a cheap, uh, just like a cheap tanning canopy hammock thing that can go up. So when I like want to tan the front, I can just put this up and, and lay down like, and lay down on here. And then when I want to tan my back, I can put that down and lay on my stomach on this. That's just to keep the bugs off of me because, you know, you have all the bugs in the grass. And I try to put my feet on the ground when I'm tanning. So, just, just to be grounded. But it's like 2.30 now, so I'll try to get a little more sun half an hour. My guys leave at 4, so uh, I'm going to try to get there by like 3.15. Just finish some stuff up, show them what to do tomorrow. And uh, I, got, I got a few things to do down there. But really nice day out. Hey guys, I'm still in shape. Don't work out, really. I'll do some some lower back stuff and some rear delts every day just because I so I don't get pain.
because the, the shoulder pain is from jerking off too much and the sometimes i get uh, lower back pain from like sitting in my chair uh mainly the main reason i get lower back pain is because of these car rides where i got to drive back and forth to new york or i got to drive in and out to these amish people where i'm sitting in my car for like five or six hours straight that really fries my lower back so the only working out i do is is that glutes and shoulders so you know i, I kind of kept most of my muscle from the bodybuilding but like my chest and my back are a lot smaller but I still look good and in shape and to me that's all that matters that's you know if you just have a base amount of muscle you're still attractive so i don't really care about working out i don't anticipate uh ever doing bodybuilding again you know i, I mean my stretch marks are finally getting okay and i don't want to mess up the tattoos at all um i don't put sunscreen on them because i figure like i'm not going to put sunscreen on them like a million times i'd rather just get the tattoos touched up every few years that's like way better use of, of time management but uh, the reason I took you guys out here is to explain the three main things that will accelerate liver detox outside of diet. Obviously, the, the diet is the most important thing, and the diet will fix your liver on its own over the course of several years. But number one, and this is by order of effectiveness, is, is tanning. When you damage your skin, your body uses the nutrients and the proteins from the liver to recycle the skin. So the more you damage your skin, the faster your liver is going to heal. Uh, the second thing you can do is to be active every day. So physically moving your body for five, six, seven, eight, nine hours a day, being physically active, manual labor job, hiking, like just, just basically being really active the whole day, that's the second best thing to do. That uses up a lot of those nutrients as well. And then the third thing is to work out because damaging the muscle tissue does the same thing. Damaging the muscle tissue... Uh, also helps accelerate. So if you do all those three things in combination, it's it's pretty good. But from a time management pers uh, from a time in but from a time investment perspective, going in a tanning bed for 15 minutes is the best bang for your buck. Working out in the gym for half an hour is the best bang for your buck. Obviously, most people can't you know go out and tan for five or six hours, which doesn't make much of a difference because it's the physical act of damaging the skin. If you want more vitamin D, then you can just take vitamin D, but if you just want to damage the skin so the body can heal it and use up the liver nutrients, <laughs> I can't even stay in my tanning bed for seven minutes. That that fries you. So that's that's a very good time investment for liver healing. And obviously being in the gym for only half an hour just to damage some muscle tissue is a lot easier than having to hike or just be active if you don't have an active job. Should we do a thumbnail out here? Nice sunny day. I gotta clean this up. <laughs> I bought. I think I told you guys. I bought a cheap. Uh, oh, I, I don't know if I showed you it though. I bought a cheap, like camping cover from Home Depot for a hundred bucks, and I figured it might last. And then I put some concrete in those buckets, and it, first day it rained, it collapsed. Literally the first day I bought it, it was collapsed on the ground. Uh, but my my sawzall is uh, is wired. I should have bought a wireless sawzall. And I don't have an ex extension cord long enough to, to run the sawzall out here. So I'm going to get borrow my buddy's sawzall and, and just cut those and bring and throw that out. Um, this guy gave me a pretty cheap price to put a deck here. So I might do that. It was only like 2000 bucks to just put up a cheap... Well, I shouldn't, but I haven't used any of my grilling equipment. I haven't been cooking outside. And I really want to get like an electric oven or something to... Uh, butterfly just... Bug just landed on my hand. Hope he doesn't bite me like the other bug. Uh, oh, that's the other thing. I got my, I'm using my bug spray out here too. I said this was a quick day of eating. Now we're just yapping all day. So we got the new bug spray in glass. I sprayed myself with it because I got, <laughs> I, went, I said, eh, I don't need the bug spray. And some bug bit my toe. I was like, oh my, I'm gonna get attacked by bugs right now. But some bug bit my toe earlier. So I went right back inside and uh, and put the bug spray on. That same bug keeps landing on me. Does he like me? Apparently, I needed to spray the bug spray on my hands too. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so I, I really want to use all this cooking equipment because I like the flame flavor on the grilled steaks. And more importantly, when I make bread, the problem is running that gas stove in my house to, to heat the oven hot enough to do sourdough is uh it, it really lowers the air quality inside so i want to get just wait i'm trying to the same bug bro 
Any uh, any bug experts in the chat know what this is? It looks like a tiny. It has beige coloring on it. Wings. Oh no, that might be a fucking mosquito or something. Yeah, he has a sucker on his mouth to bite me. So let me get rid of him. <laughs> Some type of I don't know. I don't know what that bug is. But I don't want to bite him. All right, I guess we're gonna have to. All right, let's spray the bug spray on my hands and see if he comes back. Keep getting interrupted by this bug. Yeah, point is I want to get an oven that I can put on the deck out here and uh, and just be able to bake the bread a lot easier because we'll, we'll cut we'll cut these two middle windows. We'll put a door there and put a deck and I can just walk right out from... Because right now I have no access to out here. I have no access to my backyard from the house. I got to walk all the way around the house. So, uh, you know, we gave away $33,000 for the, the blind and disabled people. And I told myself, look, Frank... You gotta, if you're gonna spend this money on that, yeah, now that, that bug landed on my hand and he flew right back off. Uh, I said, hey, if I spend all this money on the disabled people, I gotta at least spend a minimal amount of money to make my living situation more comfortable. So I wanna, that, and those two things are reducing the EMF and cooking. So I wanna put metal on the side of the house and I wanna get the cooking set up outside so I can bake my bread outside mainly. That's, that's the big thing for the air quality. So, uh, you know, it's not like I'm going to do, I'm not going to spend more than like, I think five or 6,000 on everything. So I'm still going to be like really frugal and, and do everything as efficiently as possible. The whole house does need to be redone inside. At least one bath, the bathroom needs to be gutted and fixed and all the paint and trim needs to be redone. So there's honestly probably 20 or $30,000 worth. Of, if I, if I put that money in this house instead, I'd have like a brand new fucking house out here. <laughs> uh, but we're not doing that because there's a chance that if I have to buy um, if I have to buy a farm or a butcher shop somewhere else and I do this house really nice, then what if I'm over there five days a week, you know? So I'm kind of waiting. I'm waiting to see what happens in the next year or two before I, I, I put all my eggs in one basket. But from just like a minimal investment perspective of things that need to be done, like putting that deck out here for cooking and shielding the house for EMF, those are definites. And also this... um that 30 year old hvac system that's still working is good for now for the for the cooling i'd probably just let it run if i didn't have a heating problem in the house so i'm going to get that replaced with something that has a heat pump so i don't have to pay 600 dollars a month in the winter on the heating bill which is absolutely insane if i if i get an hvac system with a heat pump it'll pay for itself in a year which is actually insane because usually when you do stuff like that you have to you know it takes years to uh to repay itself but I'll stop yapping. Oh, I guess I won't stop yapping. So I like just laying down out to tan. But if you want to be really efficient, like you could walk around like it's better, especially for circulation of lymph fluid to like it's better for me to be walking, literally just walk back and forth in my backyard. Like that's way better for uh, just for health and stuff. Just even and just move my body, do some squats, do some light exercise, just keep moving way, 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 way healthier than me laying out. But I'd honestly rather just lay on and relax and stuff. So we'll do another half hour, 20 minutes out here. Hopefully not get bitten by too many bugs. And uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to want to land on my hand anymore. But I think it's the same bug coming back. Is it? What do you guys think if I put, should I put like a tanning setup on the deck? If I, I was trying to think of how to do a grounded tanning setup on the deck. And I wonder if, if you elevated the soil, like, let, like you build the deck, you cut a hole out in the deck, maybe like a six by six square. So you could tan in all positions, right? Six by six square on the deck. You cut a hole out. You maybe put a concrete pad and then you, um, you put walls up to the level of the deck and you fill that in with soil. So you basically have a deck, but with clean soil. So like, no, you're not gonna have too many bugs and stuff on it. And you could even put grass on it. So you basically have a grass patch on the deck and you can also pound a, a rod, a, a copper ground rod into that patch and have a perfectly grounded tanning platform. I kind of, that's probably not a bad idea. Um, and that might be a lot more comfortable than uh, than me having to do this in the, in the yard. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. 
I don't think that would cost more than five or six hundred dollars. I think it'd be worth it because it'd be a lot more comfortable and probably less bugs and and a lot easier to just tan and stuff instead of messing around out here in the yard with this chair. I kind of want to do that because concrete and dirt is super cheap and that means less wood for the deck. The only issue is, you know, you'd have to probably, I'd have to probably, whatever size the deck is, I'd have to expand it out, you know, another six by six feet. So I think it would probably cost another thousand, fifteen hundred to do that. I'm thinking about it. Might as well, right? Have a nice little tanning patch. I'm just trying to remember if there's a, a sun issue. Because, I mean, the sun always comes from that direction. So I think I'm good from a shade perspective. Yeah, see, now that, that same exact bug is landing on my hand. But he's coming, he's, he's coming off immediately. Is he going to land on my hand? Now he's landing on my phone. Yeah, I don't know why that same bug likes me. I guess this is his territory. But is that, is that enough evidence that the bug spray works? That one same bug landed on my hand like three times. And then I sprayed my hand. And then when he landed two more times, he just flew right back off. But we're going to I'm put my phone inside so it doesn't get too hot. And uh, we'll probably have a little snack before we go back to work. Or we'll go down to work. Since I'm showing you guys everything, there's a vent in the floor here with the AC I'm standing over and drinking some cold water. Before I go back out. I really got to get to work, but I'm trying out new college and crisp bars. This is really special. It's not too sweet. It's very balanced. It's very tasty. It's a balance of macronutrients. I think this is going to be really special when we uh, when we launch it, hopefully in a week or two. So this is grass-fed beef collagen protein, organic hazelnut and walnut butter, Organic glucose syrup, which is made with flex dose. Highest quality sugar carbohydrate, direct fuel for your body. Honey is too sweet. So I made a glucose syrup with the flex dose and th this, that made it. And organic quinoa. So four ingredients, a little bit of salt, a little bit of uh, vanilla, but this is really delicious. Collagen crisp. I was thinking of not doing the quinoa, but I've dropped the texture. So it would just be regular collagen bars without the quinoa, which would be a lot simpler. So we're gonna have the the plain original. We'll do white chocolate macadamia. And we'll do dark chocolate hazelnut. And we'll do banana walnut. So there's probably gonna be three flavors, uh, four flavors, including this plain original one. So I think the current macros for this bar are 15 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbs, and uh, 10 grams of fat. So it's pretty good. But I'm gonna eat this, have a, head over to work. So I don't normally have a snack between breakfast and lunch, but I also don't normally tan. So I'm gonna have this, drink some water kefir with it, and then go to work, and we'll see you guys for lunch which is probably at dinner time. All right, guys, we are back for lunch, I guess, technically dinner, because it's 6.15. Uh, I dropped my car for the mechanic, got an Uber back, gonna leave it overnight. I always get motion sick, and these cab drivers always have like funky smelling stuff in their car, so I did not feel too good for a bit after that. Uh, but now I'm okay. Uh, so now that the car is there, I can just kind of wake up whatever time I want tomorrow and not worry about having to drop off in the morning. But we got, Roast beef, cooked rare from Frankie's Syringe Meat with a little bit of steak sauce with some white corn tortillas and white bean puree, everything organic, grass-fed, highest quality. This is what I make if I didn't do any prep because I can whip these together in like 10 minutes, just mix the white corn flour with some water, put it in the tortilla press, and then just cook them in the pan. So it's not super fast, but I can do it on the fly and not have to worry about sourdough bread, prep, and all of that stuff. I'm gonna to try to get the white corn flour on frankiestrangefoods.com. I just haven't been able to source it yet. I actually wanted to have pork with potatoes because I'm really enjoying that. These are the, the jarred organic potatoes we have. So what I'll do is I'll just 
saute like an Iberico pork steak in the pan, put those potatoes in, and that's like a super quick and delicious lunch. And sometimes I usually do like, I'll do half potatoes and then with some bread and some hummus. Uh, Cause just potatoes don't usually sleep too well. They, any sort of vegetable does not soak even, uh, I guess just the vegetable based starches like potatoes don't really soak toxins like grains do. So it's better to have like, you know, corn tortillas, sourdough bread with some extra fiber in the beans. I guess if I had more beans with the potatoes, it'd be okay. So we're gonna do this. And our supplement routine is gonna be zinc, molybdenum, magnesium, B1, and calcium. That's what I've been taking with every single meal for the past, I don't know, two or three weeks now. I'm actually running low on calcium. I'll say it again. Zinc, molybdenum, magnesium, B1, calcium. Those are all the antagonistic minerals you need to take for copper toxicity. And if I don't take them, I don't sleep. I do not feel good. Uh, so definitely have a bit of copper still circulating. We're gonna do the same thing we did in the morning. So we're gonna have a few bites of food. We're gonna have some kefir grains with water kefir, have a few more bites of food, take the supplements, finish the meal, wrap up with uh, the masticum and charcoal. So kind of the same protocol. I'm not gonna show you guys. And I'm just gonna kind of sit here and enjoy my lunch. We got high quality protein in the roast beef. This is like kind of the largest protein meal I have throughout the day. Steak sauce just to make it a little more enjoyable. The white corn tortillas are our grain starch energy source. And we have the white bean puree, which is soluble fiber, healthy detox the liver. Uh, just kind of, these two components are like the main detox components. And this is giving our body just some nutrients. Oh, that collagen bar I had as a snack, those are, those are really good. I'm excited to sell those for you guys. I actually wanted to eat another one. They were actually so good. Um, and I felt good eating it too. So I'm, I'm excited that we're gonna hopefully launch those in, uh, in, uh, in two or three weeks. Now you guys know my schedule's really messed up because it's eight in the morning <laughs> the next day. I passed out last night. It was like 12.30 and I was falling asleep in my computer chair. So I was like, you know what? If I can fall asleep this easy, let me just go to bed. I got up at like 7.30 and I was like, I was just gonna try to go back to sleep for a few more hours and then just post the day of eating without this meal, but I couldn't fall back asleep. And a pancake is the last thing I wanna see right now. So we did a big bowl of udon noodles. I'll try to rest for another hour or two and then probably head down to work. But this is the same meal we've been doing for a few years now. I think this is the most consistent meal. So we found these special wheat noodles that I can actually eat because they're made from uh, a certain type of wheat. Uh, we have these on the foods website, the Haku Baku Udon noodles. We take some of the collagen broth from Frankie Serrated Meat with a homemade white bean puree, which is just cannellini beans blended up with the artichoke spread from Frankie Serrated Foods. And then I put a little bit of uh, Frankie's steak sauce in here for, my, uh, for some umami and some more flavor. So we basically have a giant starch bowl with a little bit of fiber, a little bit of protein, and uh, kind of gets my pasta craving. Probably the uh, the most detox oriented meal that we have just because it's so high in starch and, and kind of doesn't have much else. We're gonna do the same thing that we did for lunch. We're gonna have some water kefir with some water kefir grains. We're gonna do the same supplement regimen with zinc, molybdenum, magnesium, B1. I have actually one calcium pill left, so just enough for the last meal, and then I'm gonna to try to bring some more home from the warehouse today. And then we'll do the, the masticum and the charcoal, and that'll be it for dinner. Still debating on whether I sleep better with or without the water kefir before bed, but I gotta figure something out because I do, I do sleep a lot better when I like wait a few hours after the last meal. However, I, I am hungry and I'd rather eat. So I'll have to sort that out because I'll, I'll just end up losing too much weight, but I don't really know if I necessarily need calories. I'll have to see how my energy levels are. I can't forget the honey crisp apples. I think I forgot to show you guys for lunch. And depending on my appetite, you know, will kind of dictate how much of the apples I want to eat. Usually just a few pieces, so probably not even half an apple now. So I'm not eating like a crazy amount of, of it with every meal. Uh, when I do go to the grocery store and buy some whole honey crisp apples, then I'll end up eating more. 
because I don't want to waste the whole apple. But then again, sometimes I just eat half of it. So it just depends on my appetite. Uh, and keep in mind, guys, I basically eat as much as I want of whatever foods are allowed on this diet. So I'm never hungry. Uh, I'm very lean in the context of my body composition. You know, I, I'd be surprised if there was someone else eating as many calories, as many carbohydrates as me without really working out or doing fitness content. You know, most people doing that would just get fat, but that's because they don't have the necessary lifestyle components to make it healthy, which is, you know, reducing the environmental radiation, making sure you're getting a balanced amount of vitamins and minerals and going organic and eating high quality foods and removing uh, the inflammatory ones. So once you do all those things, you can really just eat as much of whatever you want and still look and feel reasonably good. So that'll be it for the day of eating, guys. Uh, everything is available on frank So if you go there, you'll see the meat website, the foods website, organ supplements, Wi-Fi shielding, Frankie's Naturals, all that stuff. We always have some new and interesting products for you guys, and we're always doing new stuff. Anything that you guys spend on it, you know, it goes right back into the business and providing you guys with more products and trying to make things more affordable which can't be said of what anyone else is doing, really. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you for the next video.